are following breaking news out of Spring Valley where a man was shot by a San Diego County Sheriff's deputy. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour. This shooting happened last night in the 3600 block of South Barcelona Street, right next to the 94, as you see on the map right there. Authorities sharing new details overnight about what happened. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live at the scene now. It has been hours. Dana Marie, what's the latest? Well, Eric and Ned, I could tell you that it is still an active scene, although we have seen multiple sheriff's um, deputies leave. I spoke to one about a half an hour ago saying that this area should be opened up with at least in a couple of hours, if not sooner. In terms of what happened, everything started 730 last night in the home right behind me. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see um, even some Looks like police deputies outside that cream home. Let's listen to what um, police told us happened, especially um, since that deputy was involved. Uh, deputies received a call here at the 3600 block of South Barcelona uh, about a uh, male threatening people with uh, some sort of uh, metal bar here uh, at, at a residence. Um, deputies responded when they got here. They uh, brought people out of the residence uh, and then attempted to contact this male. During that, a uh, male was armed with a, a metal pipe, uh, sorry, a metal bar of some sort, and a uh, deputy discharged his service weapon as the male approached them. Um, male was struck at least at least once, uh, taken to a local hospital. He's uh, in stable condition, is my understanding at this point. And we do know, thankfully, that of course you heard their deputies got to the home. They were. They brought the people out of the residents that were not involved in this. Um, a deputy was not hurt. Police right now are in the middle of their investigation. San Diego Police Department is doing that for protocol and transparency. When anything happens in terms of uh, a deputy involved shooting, that's why San Diego Police investigates. Now they're going to be here all morning long. Like I said, again, we're right off the 94. Um, if we get any more information on the condition of that man right now, again, he is stable in the hospital. Of course, we'll bring that to you. CBS8.com has the latest information if you'd like to read more. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live for Spring Valley. Dana Marie, thank you. This morning, authorities say the driver who crashed into a car in Fallbrook, killing a mother and child, was being chased by a California Fish and Wildlife officer. 23-year-old Eric Arambula was in court yesterday. Prosecutors say the officer saw Arambula at running a red light and started pursuing him. It lasted about 20 seconds before the officer say, says that he saw Arambula going down an embankment onto the 15. That's where prosecutors say he drove the wrong way and then crashed into a car, killing Courtney Taylor and her young daughter. They say he was under the influence. And a work stoppage by MTS workers could continue this morning, potentially impacting your commute here. They are doing this in solidarity with union members in El Centro who are on strike. But local drivers who are also in negotiations with MTS contractor Transdev say they are ready to strike as soon as next week. This is impacting a couple dozen bus lines, mostly in the South Bay, as well as minibus and paratransit services for people with disabilities. They have doctors, appointment, they have other places to go, and they want to go shopping, and they need to get out. How they get to get out? You know what I mean? You can go to CBS8.com to see all of the bus lines impacted by this. This morning, the fentanyl crisis will be in the spotlight in Sacramento. The State Assembly's Public Safety Committee holding a major hearing on several bills related to fentanyl, some of them focusing on increased penalties. On the Senate side, a proposal to hold drug dealers accountable has failed to move forward. A new push this morning to reduce the number of migrants traveling to our border. Today, the White House expected to announce new immigration processing centers in Latin America. That's what sources are telling CBS News. Now, these new facilities would help screen people to see if they qualify to enter the U.S. legally before they make the trip all the way up north. This all comes amid a new report from the Associated Press that migrants are waiting a decade now just to get a court date, a decade. The AP says immigration offices are so overwhelmed, some asylum seekers have to wait 10 years to see a judge. The report blames the backlog on a Biden rule that released migrants quickly to avoid overcrowding at detention centers. Now, that is no longer the case. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, also known as ICE, want to use online interviews to cut down that wait time. 
This morning, the city of San Diego is getting ready to restart its smart water meter program next month. These meters were first used in 2017. 129,000 were installed, but only 23,000 were connected to the network. There were problems like high and wrong bills. Now the city hired an engineering technical professional services firm to oversee the rollout. Some people still skeptical. I am not confident at all. In fact, we, the voters of San Diego, need to hold our city officials accountable because we certainly don't want to be paying a whole lot more. A city spokesperson told us in part, quote, installation of the AMI transmitter will not affect a customer's bill. If the water meter needs to be replaced, a new meter is more accurate, so a customer's bill may change to reflect the accurate measurement of their water use. Hi, Fernando. That was huge. Is that the gritty right there? I'm not sure what yeah. he's doing. <laughs> Fernando Tatis Jr. dancing, but it was in response to Chicago Cubs fans chanting, he's on steroids. Oh. So that's how he handled the situation okay. by dancing it off. Padres player recently returned after being suspended for testing positive for a performance enhancing substance. Today, the Padres wrap up the series after beating the Cubs 5 to 3 last night. Today's game is at 11.20 a.m. An extra sweet win after that. So right. Okay. After that, the Padres are going to hop on a plane for a historic divisional showdown south of the border. From Chicago off to Mexico City they go. The Padres and Giants will play this two-game series in Mexico City over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It'll be the first time regular season Major League Baseball games are played in Mexico's capital. And before they take the field here, some players will be hosting a kids' baseball clinic for the YMCA in Mexico City. How cool is this? Tomorrow's event is going to feature new Padres like Xander Bogarts and also some Padres raise legends like Trevor Hoffman. Amazing. And our Jake Gariani and Shannon Handy will have full coverage from Mexico City. They are on their way. In fact, we're going to check in with them today at 11 as they get on that airplane. Coming up here at 630 this morning, we have your guide to Mexico City if you are one of the lucky ones traveling that direction. Oh, it's going to be such a fun weekend in Mexico. Absolutely. There's Ooh. probably going to be some uh, watch parties here. Right, Maybe right, outside, Evan, we can set up the TV and cheer them on. <laughs> Here. I hope so. I hope people are setting up across the county, across the country, and yes. maybe, you know, into Mexico as well. Uh, we are expecting it to be a beautiful, dry weekend ahead. We have Saturday as the warmest day ahead, and so that's where we reach our peak as far as warmth goes. We start to see temperatures drop beyond that. Take a look at the forecast today. Upper 60s, low 70s along the coast, upper 70s, low 80s inland. A bit of fog as we start off the morning. Visibility is reduced in Miramar. We're down to one mile. Two miles in Kearney Mesa, three in Ramona and El Cajon, two and a half up in Fallbrook. So the general big picture is that many of those clouds are low down to the ground. You may run into some trouble out on the roads, meaning trouble seeing that far in front of you. Remember to slow down your speed if that is the case. View outside from La Jolla agrees with that. Facing east, we don't really see that uh, depth. We instead see those clouds pretty low down. Sunrise 606, so technically three minutes ago. Of course, not seeing much of it because of that cloud depth. However, we're going to see more of that sun beaming on down on us by about the 9, 10 a.m. hour, very similar to yesterday in terms of when we'll see that marine layer start to break apart. Walking out the door, we're in the 50s, couple 40s. Ramona's at 43 right now, 54 in Poway, 56 in Del Mar. Compared to 24 hours ago, we are colder. However, we're just around that average marker still. So Two degrees cooler in Oceanside and Del Mar. Six degrees colder in Poway compared to this time yesterday. 11 degrees colder. Ramona's the standout uh, in terms of how much cooler it is to start off this morning. However, it's not going to be that much of a noticeable difference along the immediate coastline. 10 day temperature trend shows that Saturday is the warmest and then we start to cool down as a trough of low pressure makes its way in. 74 though on Saturday, cooling down just a bit into Sunday. Let's take a look at traffic at 609. So far, there's one crash that I want to take you to on our maps. It is in the uh, South Park area. Area. We have a crash on the entry ramp to the 94 eastbound from the 15 northbound. That's the only disturbance causing some slight backups. Also want to give you a look at border wait times. Let's take a look at the CBP website. San Ysidro port of entry, 140 minute wait. Otay Mesa port of entry, significantly faster there, 60 minute wait. Back to you too.